difficult for our cars, 1978, competing against GT3 Porsches and things. They're very analog, in a way difficult to drive. No power steering, no ABS brakes, no air conditioning. Tough. It really is tough. It's, um, uh, it's a challenge. We don't do it that often. Coming here today is something we all look forward to. There's only probably three of these relays every year. Every one of them is precious because it gives us that opportunity. It's 100 years of triumph. It's a milestone. Let's do it. You know you've got to be here by 7.30, so probably at 5 o'clock in the morning you start looking at your alarm, start counting down. Your car's always been prepared, so you're ready, really just to hook up and go. Your turn. <laughs> so we get here and uh, we take our turns, our nominated times, our nominated places, and so the, the fun begins. But this event is not about outright speed, it's about regularity, you know, being able to drive fast but consistently. So you've got to make sure that you do everything the same way, every lap, which is quite uh, demanding. This is the Porsche 6 hour, it's part of a series of 6 hour relay. The idea being you have up to 6 drivers, they have their own car and they set their own times. The idea being you are rewarded by keeping as close to the time that you set as possible. Who's on the team today? Uh, Phil Nicholson in his uh, Lotus, Michael Kipp in his TR7, uh, Buttercup. We've got uh, Rob Splatt in the TR6. I just like to get behind the wheel. It's another world. Uh, Ed Ferguson in the TR7 V8. Oh, get yeah. it. Oh. Yeah, Eddie. David Kelly in a TR7 V8 and myself in a TR7 V8. <laughs> the day is, is, is pretty full on. A lot of organisation and planning by Jeff and Shirley and, and other uh, volunteers in the team. And it goes for six hours with a maximum on track at one time of 45 minutes. Yeah, love the car. Look at it, make sure everything's all right. As a driver, it's, it's actually quite simple. We turn up, we drive. Uh, we try and keep to our times that we've nominated uh, and that's as hard as it gets. As you can see here today, we've got a host of other people who come along and help out and without them it, it just wouldn't be possible to uh, run the event. Um, we've got timekeepers and, and uh, all sorts of jobs being done. I'm the pit, one of the pit crew, so that when, and I just, we, we, they jokingly call me the, the team stripper, which because on the on the here you've got a, a Velcro strip that it gets stuck on there when the car comes in after they've been out I've got to strip it off and stick it on the next car that's ready to go out as quick as possible so that you know we don't waste any time. I have to yell sometimes, get out of the way! <laughs> the people just sort of stand around you know looking you know and I've got to make sure everyone's out of the way. The drivers themselves are probably um, some of the more experienced drivers in the club, so they've been doing these events for a long time now. <laughs> That's not to say that everybody's going to perform to their utmost on every given day. The group, it's being part of the group and contributing to the uh, success or otherwise, and over the last few years we've been quite successful. Some days somebody's up and somebody else is down, but overall as a team we we do tend to complement each other. Having a group of, of uh, like-minded members and um, uh, yeah, the, the driving is good. It's, it's not a triumph, obviously. Anyway, I've been called to duty. So uh, I think, so would you mind if we, uh, they need me on the, yeah. So okay.
always a little bit nervous at the start, but that's okay. We've got, we've got a plan, so as long as you stick to your plan, theoretically everything will go right. To try and hit my target time as much as possible, you know, that's that's all we come for. 128. It's within the capabilities of the car, but I'm working pretty hard to do one. There's about 15 to 16 other people that might have a say in it. They nominated 142, minute 42. So I was running 141.7 to 142.8, so I had a very small window. Fortunately, because there wasn't too much traffic, if you repeat the same process, the outcome should be the same. Ready to go out on my first run for Rob Slack coming in the TR6. It's Jan Mason. And now, here I go. Team manager Jeff is sending me out. My target time today is a minute 37. I actually didn't see my time when I came in. Uh, the timing had switched off. Apparently I did reasonably well. My nominated time was 1.42, but I exceeded that by four seconds, I noticed. I was a naughty boy. It's a 1.40. And I'm afraid to say I've been a little bit um, heavy on the right foot so far. I need to slow up is what I need to do. All sorts of things. Well, I reckon it's part of the deal we Feeding the troops yet again. <laughs> Morning tea, lunch, afternoon tea, we'll keep going. Sausages in bread with a bit of onion, chicken, you got to be quick. <laughs> tea or coffee that's getting you through a race day? Coffee. A lot stronger than tea for one. And I'm English. Never drank tea until I was about 16 years old. Only drank black coffee. Strange, strange English person. <laughs> oh, oh, goodness me. Uh, tea, 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 tea. Oh, well, I have a tea in the morning, but then coffee later during the day, so it's a bit of a bonus. Coffee. Definitely coffee. Just a grumpy until I've had my coffee in the morning. Certainly uh, wine when we get home. <laughs> oh yes, absolutely. Maybe even a beer after this. Yeah, yeah. yeah. A black coffee would go down well at the moment. Yeah. Why oh, coffee? Yeah. Yeah, I drink it too much. Both. Yeah, so my first drink of the day is tea. Second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth and seventh are coffee. Yeah. Three in the morning. <laughs> Two in the afternoon when I was at work. It used to be 10 in the morning. Oh my god! But you just automatically fill it up. Coffee. Always coffee. Coffee and coffee. Coffee and lots more of it that give me a perk up. But it's about time for a beer, not coffee. Earl Grey, Lady Grey, coffee when I go to a cafe. Well, I'll wait my turn now, so there's four more drivers to go, so it should be a couple of hours at least, I hope. So I'm enjoying coffee now. <laughs> <laughs> This is what we do for our weekend. <laughs> <laughs> they all like they all like to hang stuff on you. <laughs> <laughs> Seems like too. But we wouldn't ever have it as bright as this. This, this is bright. We've got a photo bomb him <laughs> on the way past. <laughs> <laughs> Great stuff. Today I was in a Lotus, a very expensive car, and it let us down. So all the old France ran beautifully, and my $200,000 Lotus failed miserably. This morning I started it up, and it was fine. Went out onto the track, and it did three laps. The car started cutting out. Yeah, got to 4,000 roofs and switched itself off. <clears throat> so now I'm going to disconnect the battery and let it think for a while, and see if it uh, regains its composure. The car thinks there's a problem, so it goes into a limp mode and it just won't let you rip the engine. Disconnected some parts and everything, but basically that's not the answer. So it's something electronic that's dying and when it dies completely, I'll be able to work out what's wrong. This is, yeah, this is six hours long. It does not stop and so things go wrong.
you just have to keep going. When David went to go out before um, his starter motor, it was like the battery was dead. What had actually happened is the starter motor had just engaged on the flywheel. So all we did was put it in gear and rock it a bit to get it to release. And now hopefully it'll be good to go. Yeah. The joys of owning an old car, I guess you'd call it. It's a team event, you know, like I can't, if I have a bad day, I can't go over in the corner and sulk. It's a team event. We race for ourselves or we, we sprint for ourselves. We, we go out there and we, we try and do the best we can for us. On a day like today, you're part of that team. That's what we're here, that's what we're here for. So, and being one of our elder statesmen, of course we've got to jump in there. You want to contribute, you don't want to let the team down. So the guys take it pretty personally if they've let the team down. We do the best preparation we can. And nine times out of 10, we run quite well. Pardon the squeaky brakes. I've learnt that you shouldn't rush into the car, that's the worst thing you need to do. You need to sit down, put your helmet on, get prepared, watch for a little while and then I'll just close my eyes and just zen out and then wait. Driving the track, uh, we've driven it many, many times so you can sit in your seat and visualise how you're going to drive the track. Once you get driving, it's you, you're in the zone and you're getting directions from the your pit cr crew to tell you to go faster or slower. If you've been doing it a while, it sort of slots into place. The next one would be the end lap. Yep. Okay. Yep. The butterflies are gone, I'm ready to go. Yep. Yeah, so it's all good. I hope. <laughs> won't happen very often. Is it a metal mark? Yeah! Rob did really well. He was bang, bang, bang. That's why they left him out there. I could have stayed out there all day, I'd have a ball. Oh, one drama, the car cut out at one stage. No reason, just stopped on me. Otherwise, yeah, good. Congratulations to all of you. Well, I want to call out the Triumph people who are here. Could you put your hands up and indicate if you're here from Triumph? Yeah. Oh, thank goodness they're here this time. Uh, so the, 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 tri the Triumph Mark is celebrating their 100 years this year, and uh, I'm really pleased that you saw fit to come back and join us at this event. Uh, congratulations to the Mark, and congratulations to all of you who have the good, good presence to uh, be part of Triumph and its sporting history and heritage. So thank you. Thank you. Very gracious, thank you. Triumph Mark as a car manufacturer is dead and I don't think it will ever reappear. I would really like to think that the Triumph clubs around the world will sort of get new blood coming in all the time and I think that's important. The reason that we're making this film for us is that we'll document for the future what we did. It's a challenge because they're old cars. It'd be nice to think that the, the image of Triumph cars would be around for a lot longer. When I sent the email to Porsche, I got a response from them in less than one minute going, yes, they sent it off and it's on the front page of Motorsport Australia that we are ce celebrating the 100 year of Triumph at the Porsche 6 hour. For our club to be successful, there are a number of platforms. Motorsport is one of those. Generally do very well as a group of people driving 
40 year old car. The Triumph Sports Owners Association were the start of the six hour event and the first one I went to in 1960 I think and it was at Fisherman's Bend Airstrip. I was involved there in that, not as a driver though, only as a ground crew in the late uh, 90s. Uh, TSO had, a, had teams then. Ever since then it's been more open to more people. We've won this event before, 2021. We came third, I think, last year. Congratulations in seventh place, TSOA Triumph Racing. Congratulations, Steve. Great effort and we love having you at the event. The good times are the laughter, I think, as a team and as a bigger team, not just six drivers. What we've got is what we've got. The end of the road will happen one day. We don't have any of our family members following us through, or very few. But the, the club's still quite strong. Uh, Dave Kelly, he's on the money at 86 and he's nominated his time and he's got a great philosophy, great steerer and a, a great leader for our group. It's just a very good, healthy, interesting and rewarding community club. I, I'm just in awe of the, the ability of the people that organise these events and we're all very, very thankful that they do. I mean, we've all got other exotic race cars and toys which we could bring which probably perform better than these cars. But all Triumph is really Triumph. We have people that are interested in competition, we have people that are interested in the social aspect, we have people that are interested in restoring their cars, and all these different stratas of the club, if you like, come together with a common cause in this, in this event. So I think the great thing is it's very unifying for the club. These cars, they're old. If you modify them correctly in the same way as they did for some of them in the factory, they're really good. I mean, where do you buy a you know twenty thousand dollar car that can compete more or less with a Porsche? The car means having the ability to do what I do. Having the car is that gateway. Without the car, well, we'd come along and spectate and help maybe, but it wouldn't be the same.